I'm talking to uh, Hans Ippisch. Hello, Hans. Hi. And I'm talking to you because um, you started your career with making um, games, coding games for Rainbow Arts, actually. Absolutely, yeah, I did. Like 30 years ago. Yeah, actually, the, the, my first computer, uh, uh, the first time I got in touch with the computer was 1984, uh, because uh, just this week uh, I was uh, preparing a presentation for uh, um, a culture forum here in uh, Nuremberg, and I was asked whether I would like to uh, tell the people, the usual guests here at the Kultur Forum, it's about culture, which is very good, uh, about the past or the beginning of computer games. So actually, uh, in a, so I have two parts, the, 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 uh, the uh, development of games since 1950 something, and the de uh, development of media. And of course, during that part, uh, I came over this uh, old Commodore machines, CBM, with uh, 25, uh, 40 characters and 25 lines and actually I uh, found that a, st a screen, the, you know, the black screen with the green characters um, and uh, so uh, it made me uh, uh, remember when I started in 1984 in the gymnasium at the school in, in, in uh, Zwiesel they had suddenly the computer room and I was spending my, my time in the computer room suddenly and what my parents did uh, for, for Christmas 1984, I got a C64 as a present, and the Christmas present. So, and that's actually how I started. And then and, and, uh, I, I started the first games were in basic language, uh, of course, uh, then in assembler. And uh, in uh, the summer of 1986, I actually signed my first contract uh, when I really started to code and uh, and. Uh, um, and it might, uh, uh, it might be interesting to see how the people react uh, coming to my presentation because for the, the, the uh, I would say the people older than 35 uh, for them it's very interesting and then then people younger than 30 it's like in a mu walking in a museum is like what this is a game I don't believe it so but it's actually it's very interesting to see how things. Uh, uh, have, have worked out and to see how the first tennis game was made or pong so that's very interesting to see uh, in the past and also to see the most successful uh, uh, gaming uh, series which was actually of course it's super mario uh, but by far and with more than 460 million sold uh, units uh, and also but you also see something like angry birds with 2.5 billion uh, downloads so that's interesting to see, and if somebody would have told me in 1984 uh, what's, uh, what's coming in the following years, I wouldn't have uh, believed it, but, uh, but that's it. Uh, uh, and then also if somebody would have told me that uh, I'm sitting here on a MacBook doing a Skype interview, everything fine, it's like, okay, great. And also that I have here Games TV 24-hour uh, gaming app and live stream app, in, in your hand and everything is working I would have said that would, would sound crazy and because if you just take a look at the movies and Tron and all that stuff it's wonderful to, to take a look back and to see what's going on every day yeah. you, you didn't really think back then you would um, make uh, some kind of pioneer when you started playing with the computer at school uh, no, I, I didn't. I just was keen on uh, 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 on programming computer, and it was just wonderful for me um, to do that, uh, to make a game, or to. It was, you know, uh, everybody, uh, everyone has a different hobby. I also was playing football, and then, uh, and, uh, but it's, uh, you know, some had learning a, a music instrument, but actually, I love m music. That's my greatest love, by the way. Uh, uh, you don't think about it. Of course, I was always working all the time, and it makes uh, it's a lot of fun. But I, I didn't. Uh, you actually you don't think about it uh, when you do it, and so it, it was just fun. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, it's always as long as you have fun working. 
then it's the best way. Of course, there are also bad times, you know, but if you, you know, when the sales figures of games or magazines or the reach of websites or the advertising revenue is this good, of course, you always have that times. But actually, uh, I always, that's what I say my, my, my colleagues uh, that, that Computech Media, we are 200 people there, I always say we are living in a paradise. You, if you have to, if you, you co compare your job going to, to, to the publishing house and writing articles, making videos and all that stuff, compare it to uh, joining the assembly line at, uh, at Opel or uh, uh, Volkswagen, you know, that's, that's a difficult job. So, so uh, that's, uh, and you don't think making uh, a pio being a pioneer, uh, is that something that you've been told and afterwards that you did something that, that not everybody did? But actually, it's, um, yeah, I, I'm very thankful for that. And, uh, and that's also why I, uh, uh, why I spent some time making a presentation because I, I would like to give something back. We also have in our company, we have uh, uh, pupils from the school. And then that, uh, for example, my son, he's 13 years old now. He was there in the office for one week. And he was seeing how we do a website, how how we do a daily news show for Games TV 24, and then he was uh, he, he saw how things are working and how's it going. He was fascinated. He said, "Oh, that's cool. That, that's media." And uh, and when I started at uh, Computech, we're having a print magazine, you know. Uh, yeah. But it's always it's always changing, and that's I think that's the most important thing um, that. Since uh, um, I, I joined the uh, games business, um, every time there was something new. Uh, it never uh, remained the same. And because if you uh, in a bakery, you would, you would always do basically the same. But here it's, uh, everything is changing all the time. And that's, that's, I would say, a good thing. You're never bored. And, uh, and, and then you also um, you, um, have to... You have to stay keen on new things. As soon as you, uh, I, ca I can name a few, could name a few colleagues. Once you are bored, and you are not interested in the new stuff, and you know not not interested in YouTube and game gaming apps and all that stuff, then it's dangerous, because you always have to be after the, the like you say, I would say. You should be interested in new things, always in in this business. If you're not, well. I know that there are some people they re prefer to play Plumax on the Commodore 64, and that's a, that's fine. But you also should look like oh, a new Angry Birds is out there. I need to play it. CP Publishing back then Absolutely. in the yeah. 80s, yeah. So yeah. and that now you are the CEO. So you you were grown up and made your career in the gaming business. <laughs> How did it actually happen that you became a coder at Rainbow Arts? I, actually, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you couldn't plan my 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 uh, curriculum vitae. Um, well, I, it was very easy. Um, I got uh, I programmed the first game before I got the first computer. I wrote it on a piece of paper, in basic. Uh, it was 30 lines called White Max, and it was kind of Pac-Man. And uh, uh, and of course, I was reading magazines at that time in the 80s. I was reading Happy Computer. And 64 magazine, yeah, 64 <laughs> magazine, and and then from the 64 magazine, I've learned uh, uh, machine code assembler, and also Chris Hulsbecker, as we all know, he also read uh, was an avid reader of C64 magazine because he won the competition, and also back in 1985. I was sending in a poke. Probably you know what the poke is. Yes, oh, I'm pretty sure you know what a sure. poke is. A very special poke, and that was uh, published in the magazine. And I got the sticker and 20 Deutschmarks uh, and a letter from the editor. And I was so proud. And I had the sticker on the door of my my uh, room, you know. And I was so proud to have. It. And actually, and once in the Happy Computer, and then I always knew exactly when the new issues would be released or be on the se on the shelves. And I was driving to the, the city with my mom, and buying the new issues of Happy Computer and 64 magazine, and later on a ASM. So uh, and and always was reading that. And once there was an uh, advertising of Rainbow Arts. I never heard of this company. It was half page. I won't forget this. And they were looking for programmers. And that time I was making my, my first game uh, uh, in, in machine code. It was uh, 
Alec XS21, nobody knows it. It was with a tank. You could drive a tank. And I was sending that on a tape because I didn't have a, a floppy disk on a tape to, to Gütesloh, to, to Mark Alexander Ulrich. Because I only saw, I thought this advertisement, oh, it's interesting. I, I will send him my, my game. Uh, and actually, it was it like, now I'm going to be a huge uh, uh, star or, you know, probably when, when you become musician, you, you tr think about, oh, yeah, I will be on the stage with the guitar and the whole world will sing my songs. Actually, at that time, you, you didn't know that there are big stars or anything. So I was uh, reading that advertising. Uh, I sent my tape and uh, a few days later, I got a call. Uh, from from Mark Alexander Ulrich, uh, and he wanted uh, me to sign a contract that my next game should be for Rainbow Arts. And I said well, at that time I was uh, I was 16, uh, and I said, "Well, uh, interesting." And he he said he will come all the way down from Gütersloh to Regen, which is in the Bavaria next to Munich, I would say. So it's several hundred kilometers to drive. And and yeah, we so uh, he said he would come. And the day before he should come, he called and said, "Oh, I should come to Munich with train." Uh, and then my father only once said, "No, you go, don't go by train there, because at that time you didn't have a mobile phone and then all that stuff to know where you are." And he has to come here. Uh, and so actually he came with his Golf GTE at that time, uh, <laughs> Golf GTI. Uh, so uh, and. So I signed a contract, and that's how it started. So I, I had the first game, and I was and Chris was sending me the disc once with the soundtrack, and, uh, I, and I finished the game in January in in in, in Gütersloh at the Mast at Sono Press. Holger Flötmann, the later founder of uh, uh, Ascaron and Talion, spent really the whole night with me at uh, at. Uh, uh, Sono Press at that time, and uh, four, a few weeks later, it has been released. And well, actually, as it turned out, it was uh, the first game, the first German game that has been banned, which may, means that uh, uh, only adults uh, were allowed to buy this game. And that's how it started. And later, uh, immediately after that, I made my. Uh, I was asked by, by um, Mark Alexander Ulrich whether I could help Matthias Sukos because he was finishing uh, a Bad Cat. Uh, and he didn't. Well, uh, things didn't uh, go as uh, as planned. And he asked me whether I would uh, develop a few two levels. And of course, I would get a few thousand Deutschmarks for that, which was great for uh, for, uh, for the age of 16. So I helped Matthias Sukos uh, finishing that game. In '88, I got a call from uh, Walter Konrad. He was working for CP Verlag, which you mentioned before, and asked me, "Yeah." You, so oh, we have here uh, disc magazines, and um, do you have any games? And they said, well, I don't have any games, but I have an idea, and we, which is, was an idea for a very small game. And, said, and he offered me uh, also uh, quite uh, good money, uh, so, uh, uh, and I said, well, I can produce it. And in total, I, then I made three games. And also, at one day, I got in touch with uh, Christian Gelbenbaut, the actual founder of and an owner of Computech or CP Verlag at that time, because there was a competition uh, going on, and <coughs> uh, and I started in, in 89, 90. I started to study in Bamberg next to Nuremberg, and uh, at that time I was uh, got in touch with Christian Geldenfeld, and uh, during that competition we nearly had a telephone call every day, and that was game was Kangaroo, which was actually my best game. Uh, thanks to the great idea of Markus Muckenschnabel, his nickname is Mac, by the way, and I'm sitting in front of a Mac, and I bought my first Mac, SE120, I bought from Markus Muckenschnabel, still standing over there. So, um, yes, and then, then and ex exactly this company, uh, CP Verlag, uh, started uh, a print magazine. And Christian asked me, Hans, would you like to join us and, and uh, help us? And I said, well, actually, well, yeah, uh, I, I, I would like to join you while I was studying uh, as a freelancer. I said, I have an idea for a, a, a regular column in this magazine. It was called Hype Stream Academy, uh, where I, because I knew, uh, um, I knew a lot of developers, of course. And I said, I'm going to introduce the German developers. And Dream Academy was, you know, you're making your dream come true and games are dreams. And that's how it started. So I had 
I was uh, uh, writing reviews and news for, for Playtime at that time, 91, the first issue, and uh, I was having the, the uh, Dream Academy, where I had Factor 5 and then all the people in this Italian, in this... Uh, and later on in 92, he started Amiga Games Magazine and after two issues by the end of 92, he, Christian, asked me whether I would like to take over Amiga Games as a managing editor. And I said, well, if you think that I can do this, uh, then I will do this. In the end, I, I, I was still studying. I was uh, writing all the tests, but actually, um, so, and that was 92, I, I took over as managing editor. And in 93, uh, Christian Gelbert asked me whether I would uh, like to take over as managing editor also Sega magazine. And, and he said, but you have to join us on a daily basis. And not as a freelancer. So I had to make the, 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 the choice between, okay, do I finish university, which I did actually then, after quite uh, some while, and starting completely working for Computec. And yeah, and that's how it started. And so I had uh, two magazines. In 97 there was Endzone, and then I was editorial director for all the console magazines. I was doing Kidzone, and, and so on. And then they took over the commercial director position. And um, in 2009, as it comes, yeah, no, we were going public, and Christian Gelbert left the Computec in 2005, uh, and I was uh, taking more editorial uh, uh, um, responsibility, and uh, and now we 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 are part of Macro Media. Uh, uh, a Swiss, uh, very famous Swiss uh, publisher, and he's uh, completely owner of Computec now, and he likes Computec and all everything we do. And uh, actually, there's only one person working for Computec that has joined before me, only for one week, but that's Hans Georg Hafner. He's a gra graphics artist, media designer, and uh, yeah, and that's how, how it came uh, that. Uh, I'm still there, and then we, Computec is now completely different. We have uh, we have magazines, we have websites like Golem, we have server business like for Net Players, Game Server, Teamspeak Server. We have apps, we have events, uh, Quo Vadis in Berlin or Respawn at the Gamescom or all that stuff. And that's Computec now. Fifty percent is print, and then we have digital and all that stuff. And it still has to do in basically with the gaming. Uh, with gaming basically that's still our core business everything is gaming and um, yeah and and actually um, if somebody w would have the idea you know what I, I write down how your life will be and what products Computec will have you would never have that idea so yeah. uh, so but it's uh, and always one thing I'm very thankful for that but of course it's also uh, hard work so you always as soon as you, I only, I always say, as soon as you think you are safe, or as soon as you think that you are something, you have stopped becoming something. <laughs> so as soon as you are satisfied and say, "Wow, well, now it's great, everything is fine," in this business, it's very dangerous to say, "Oh, now we have the best-selling magazine," or "Now we have the website with the biggest reach," or "Now we have." It, you're never safe in this media business, and because uh, it's uh, constant, the only thing that's uh, constant is the constant change of everything. You know, different consoles. Um, afterwards, we will, now we have, uh, you know, then we had browser games and still have browser games. Then free to play, or everyone is talking about mobile games, and then uh, you know, everything uh, is uh, coming a, a, a long way, and uh, so it's. You have much more possibility to play games now because you can still can play browser games. You can play mobile games. You can play a PC game. You can play uh, a PlayStation game, everything. And then nothing is, uh, you know, we always know uh, how often did we hear that the PC is dead <laughs> or consoles are dead <laughs> or yeah. mobile, gaming. mobile yeah. gaming will be dead. Yeah. Or whatever, but yeah. actually, you never know what happens next. Yeah. And uh, if somebody says, "Oh, every no browser games are the future. Everything will be free to play and browser games," <laughs> no, it won't happen. Also, everything is now mobile games. No, it won't. Just won't happen uh, because people like to play something like GTA 
on the PlayStation uh, 4, which is gra uh, great, or Call of Duty, or <laughs> whatever. You know, you know all the games. Uh, you like to play them, and you also like to play Touchfish or uh, Angry Birds or or even a very simple. Uh, once in a while, uh, I, I start a C64 uh, emulator on my PC at the office, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> and, and I start. You know, Football Manager. Yeah, of uh, course, from, yeah. From Kevin uh, Thomas. I don't play Football Manager. I play Software Store. That was the sequel, and there you had the chance to create. Uh, you know, your your target was as a manager of a software house to publish great games. So you had to decide. Now the game is is nearly finished. How do I treat the developers? Give it the money, or do I? Uh, well, yeah, the other way around and say you have to work and then you have to decide what's the name, how many advertising you will spend and <clears> then you see on your, the charts you beep, 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 if you're getting to number one and selling a lot of units and uh, it's always funny to see because in this game then suddenly Soldier is number one in the charts and that's something I'm playing from time to time mm -hmm. because it's just as much fun as playing uh, Mario Kart on Wii U with my sons, uh, so it's uh, and so ne w what I want to say is in the end it, uh, gaming has to be entertaining. Of it course. can be only characters and simple, yeah. a little bit of text, and it can be uh, fantastic with graphics. So and that's that's I think the most important thing uh, that uh, it has to be entertaining. Oh, um, that's interesting um, to go to go back to your history because. Um, I remember White Max was an Easter egg on Danger Freak on the original diskette. Um, you know because um, no. you you comp oh, you you God. yeah you yeah. you you manipulated the directory so you could only see Danger Freak. But if you had an action replay or a Final Cartridge three, you could actually see the whole directory, no. and there was White Max hidden. Yes. And I was playing it, I was thinking, why did Hans Ippisch put that under this cat? It's a basic game, you know? Yes, <laughs> from 1984, 90, it was the first game I made. I did. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yes. If you could send me a print out of the listing or whatever. Of course, of course. Oh, that's a screenshot, because it was only you had to, to move a character and, and collecting flowers or whatever. It was only the basic cards. Hearts, concept. hearts, actually, yeah. 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 Oh. And that yeah. was actually, you know, that because that there was there was a game Black Max for the uh, Vic Twenty, uh, you know, and yeah. I said I want to have this on a C sixty four because my my uh, my my uncle had a Vic, and then I said I want to have this game, and so I I programmed it before I actually had a computer. Yeah. Great! I totally forgot about that. <laughs> you know, another game. My 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 two boys, they are eighteen and thirteen. They are laughing about it because they asked me. Uh, because now I understand that I did made games, and um, and then uh, my, my game after White Max was my, my also in in basic, uh, it was called Easy to Imka. And my 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 both sons always laugh when I, they just ask me because they like when I say Easy to Imka. Because <laughs> what you had to do, you were an Imka and you had to move from left to right and shoot uh, at the bees. That was your job. And, and and I remember I took this game. It was a very uh, 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 crappy game, but it was in basic. Uh, what I did, I was, was easy to imker, and then I had uh, a subline. I had uh, uh, by Ocean Software, 1985, and I was going uh, to my my friend's house and said, "And I have the newest game from Ocean." I said, "Yeah, <laughs> wow, wow, great!" And then he was seeing the screen. Oh, Ocean, that's really great. But uh, he actually then found out. Well, no, that's not something from Ocean or Imagine. So, um, and that's about really White Max. You, you know, I have it in my mind because I will never forget White Max. But, I, but because my my sons, are, if I have Isidor Imker somewhere, do we know? Probably I have published no Isidor Imker somewhere. Oh, that's very really interesting. That's great. I, if, I, if you could send me a print out of, of course, the, of course, the, you totally right. forgot about that. Okay, <laughs> I forgot about putting that on this. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. I never forgot about the game. But you know, uh, I remember thinking, yeah, if you uh, insert uh, in an in, 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 my my birthday date, 
then you have to cheat. Yes, of course, I know something like that, but I don't didn't know that I included white max somewhere. Yeah. And of course, and especially that somebody found out. Um, so great. Yes. Yeah. One reason why why Danger Freak was actually in my head all the time is because it had a copy protection that if you copy it and the copy protection check fails, then it formats the disk. Ah. <laughs> Oh, I know that was pretty tough at that time. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> well, yeah. I have to. I can tell you a story uh, or, uh, about Danger Freak. I'm actually pretty proud of Danger Freak because that was really the first game that was uh, really decent from the technical view, and and it's still okay and a good good idea. And I remember that I had to send the, the review disc. Um, to Happy Computer to Heinrich Lenhardt, which was later on a colleague here at, Col at Computech. So I had to send uh, the copy disk, uh, uh, the, the, the review disk, the, the golden, the master disk, to Heinrich uh, on the next day via, via post. You didn't have via, uh, internet or uh, <laughs> uploading, on it. so you had to uh, save it on the disk and send it to, to, to make it uh, uh, just in time to, to get a uh, review in the next issue. So what I did, I was finishing the game uh, and as well I was working uh, all the time it was only only small bugs and at three o'clock in the morning at that time I was spending I was going to school of course um, and that was it actually uh, in 1988 yes uh, and so um, I thought everything is fine and I was saving it onto the disk and you know what happened the disk crashed. The disk actually was broken, corrupt, uh, because it, I've, I've written on the disk 20 or 50 times, <laughs> as you probably you couldn't read anything. Yeah. And the problem was everything I was coding between uh, uh, 11 o'clock uh, uh, and then 3 o'clock in the morning was lost. Uh -huh. And was like, oh my god. And so everything was, uh, you didn't have hard, uh, hard disk and all that stuff everywhere, no, you didn't, just didn't have it. So what I had to do, everything I did, I had to remember and then I, I changed. And actually I was um, at 6 o'clock in the morning, so I was working the whole night. Uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning I was uh, uh, finished with, the, with everything and it worked and I put it into the package. and. And it was completely tired and then I was driving to the, the post office and sent it via courier and uh, and from that I was driving to school and the first lesson was was history and at that time we it was very um, trendy to have something like a, a suitcase as a bag uh, and I was uh, I was having uh, like just like with, with the thing I was my suitcase and I was uh, making it this way uh, and actually I was sleeping behind Ooh. so um, and uh, and we'll never forget because the, the my my um, the teacher uh, uh, Fräulein Trüger at that time uh, she was waking me up and I Hans what are you doing I go, oh I'm just working um, and then so uh, I will never forget me but, but uh, because I will never forget that I was working working the whole night sending it to Munich and uh, Getting the review and uh, and so and that was also the problem with the disc. And from that time on, I always had more, uh, some more discs, and I also regularly making uh, uh, copies. copies of yeah. it, just to keep it to keep uh, it safe. And uh, that's and also one thing, uh, of course, the teacher knew that I was coding, and that and I remember when I was in January 1987. I was uh, uh, had to master my first game, and uh, uh, and uh, together with my mom, I was uh, going to the director of the school and asking whether I could get three days off for doing this job, and and he was uh, Friedrich Schlumbrecht. He died last year, which Sarah said. He actually didn't say no, you can't. He said yes, that's great, do something, and he understood at that time that probably that's a good idea. And uh, and so uh, the teacher knew what I was doing. Uh, so I was not a bad uh, 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 pupil. I was. Uh, it was okay. I, I actually uh, coding was more important than learning for school. And, um, <laughs> okay. So I, I, I made my school. That was which is okay. And uh, uh, but it's uh, uh, a funny thing because. Uh, 
and uh, because I, I, I actually got some money then, of course, and compared to, to the others, uh, I had some money, which is, uh, for example, I drove with my own car. It was a, uh, a VW Golf uh, to school uh, and a very old car. But it was my my own car, so uh, I was never I was never rich or something like that. But it's you know when you have a few hundred Deutschmarks and then and the other have nothing, then it's of well, it's you yeah. can't could afford something. So uh, and that was also something that I was working quite hard. Uh, uh, I was also playing football, so I was not always locked in my room. I was always spending time with my friends, and also because they were playing the games, I asked them. So uh, and that was the funny thing that it's. Uh, uh, I got some money, I got some attention, and well, and that uh, was a good mix. And, and then also, yeah, I was also a DJ later on. And basically, what I found out once in my life is, I always uh, tend to produce uh, or things or do things where you have to find out what other other uh, other people like. If you make a game, actually, uh, you always ask yourself, who, what would uh, the people like to play? I never said uh, what I would like. Would I like to play? So uh, what would they like? Or also, when you are a DJ, uh, because I, I love music and still love music, then you have to find out what do they like to hear or, uh, that they want to dance. Mm. And of course, in the, the perfect mix is when it's your uh, own, uh, uh, when it's what you like. But basically, and also when you are making magazines, it's also the same. You have to find out what do people people expect. What are they paying for? And it's the same with apps or whatever. You, you always, and that's something. Um, my interest is to find out what do people like, and how can, I, uh, and also, and to have a mixture with, uh, to surprise them sometimes, and uh, and also you have the uh, sometimes to you try to educate them. Of course, when you have a magazine and, and or a website, you also want to tell something to the people. So, and that's uh, that's the the common thing thing in my my life. Uh, if I was uh, producing games or being a DJ or writing articles or making magazines or even doing events. Uh, today I was in Munich, we were talking about a new event uh, doing uh, uh, in April in Munich. It's uh, what would pe people like to, to uh, be at then? And, and it's the same to find out, uh, okay, is there a target group? What do they like? And that's basically uh, one thing in common to, because it sounds very... Um, Confusing uh, what, what I did in my life, but actually in the in the end it's always the same. That I'm, uh, uh, I try to think. I was also writing some songs. Um, my wife, my wife did hear them, <laughs> but I'm not a musician. But also it's the same to to produce something that people actually like, and that's uh, and then and that's uh, or to entertain people. Let's put it this way: to entertain people. To give them a good time. That's basically the tension. To give them a good time with the good music, with a good game, a good magazine, a good article, or a good presentation, or whatever. Give people a good time. I would say. I mean, I guess it's it's easier for you because you know you know the gaming business from all sides. As I said, you you're playing games yourself. You develop games yourself, and you wrote you write about games. Now you are publishing. Uh, magazines for games, yeah. so you know all different angles yeah. of the of the gaming business. You have the whole round view about everything. Uh, basically, that was an advantage in the beginning of Computech when we were making magazines. That I had an, um, it, it was easy for. For example, that's why I got a very good relationship with uh, guys like Tommy Tellerico, the musician, or. Uh, which uh, I was very happy to meet in, in the Cologne in, uh, at Gamescom because we were actually organizing the, the the gigs he did there, or with David Perry and all that uh, all the people because um, I they knew that I was programmer and probably we didn't we did work together like with the guys from Factor Five and that was easier for me to 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 ask them because when you don't have uh, when you don't know anything about coding. And it's easy for the programmers to tell you anything, <laughs> which, uh, which I actually did sometimes. And uh, and they knew that they couldn't tell me anything, and that uh, sometimes I had questions they didn't like because they knew that uh, they couldn't tell me anything. And probably that was a little, so the, the diff was a difference in the beginning, at, at least with our magazines, that uh, I was uh, coming from that part, so that there was more know-how than other other magazines probably had. And uh, and also, but on the other way, I always try to be fair 
to to uh, because it's easy to uh, uh, put uh, something into the trash and say that's that's uh, rubbish and a bad game. But because but I, I never forgot because my my first game was horrible and it was written <laughs> down by OSM hypes hype or video soldat in Helden tot starb. This was hurting me at that time. Uh, because I, it was everything uh, that was the best I could do, and uh, so uh, I, I never forget that probably somebody was giving his best to produce uh, this product and to say and uh, to to use words that are not very uh, very nice. You you can say that the product is not as good as other products, but you don't have to um, use words that are really hurting the developer. We all know there probably are some products that are not worth it, but at least I always I always thought uh, said to myself, you know, uh, people work, were working hard for this product. The, the the graphic artist, the musician, the coder, they were doing the best, and uh, so you t you always try to be fair. And probably that was the reason why I had a good relationship with the. The developers, and that's why why uh, they gave me some information um, earlier than other magazine editors became them. So that was, uh, I think, a give and take, and uh, and probably and that, and also one thing I always tell my colleagues: um, when you are producing a, a website, a magazine, an app, or whatever, you have to give do it with passion. If you just are bored and like, oh my God, and now I'm writing ten sentences and I'm not care, I don't care, and I've written my, and now I go home. If you don't care about what you what your output is, if you don't care, is it a good review? Are the screenshots good? Is it a good video? Is it uh, does this video really show everything you need to know? If you don't care, uh, then people will will um, they will find out. Uh, they they will find out whether you're doing this with passion. Or if you're doing just just like, oh my God, I have to do it, and that uh, it's uh, something I all every Christmas uh, uh, dinner we have, I always tell all my colleagues, please make sure. That's what something I said in the beginning. Once you're bored and it's like, oh, I don't care, then people will, will feel it, and they won't come back to your website. They won't come back to your app. They won't. If you you know, I always look every day on Games TV 24 the daily news. And if you you have the feeling that they are bored having the daily news, uh, <laughs> then you are you you wouldn't like to to watch it anymore, and uh, and that's something that's very important. That's why Computech, if you take a look at the web pages, media with passion, we say, <laughs> and that's uh, actually that's something I have stolen from from future publishing in England. But uh, that's uh, really how I understand it. Media with passion. You, if you don't have the passion, it's a, I think it's the same if you're a musician. And why you, you, when you see Chris Hulsbeck, for example, uh, as our dinner in Cologne, because he was uh, sitting next to me, and when Patrick was playing on the piano, and then Chris was sitting there, and then uh, you know, with the feeling the music, and you really see it, it was touching him and the passion. Uh, I saw it, yeah. Yeah, because it's you know he's feeling something, and the, there is there are other musicians that don't feel anything. So it's like, yeah, just have to read it, don't care. But that's the difference. Do you feel something? Do you feel that the the reader cares about, or the the the, the editor cares about you? Uh, that's something you feel, and that makes you come back. Uh, I think it's the same in the with football stadium. Um, when you have a team that's not giving a, a shit about the results, it doesn't matter. Then the people won't join uh, the, the, uh, them in this in the stadium because they don't feel if they're only it's the, they don't care if they win or lose. Then it doesn't make uh, uh, then it's not uh, uh, entertaining. And, and and if you see they're giving their best, even if they might lose, it's the same watching a tennis match. If somebody doesn't want to win, and then it's not worth to see it. But if you see something fighting with passion, then it makes you makes you come back, and and uh, and, and that's also something uh, I would say. Um, uh, of course, you all have good days and bad days, and probably there are some days where you say, "Well, oh, let let me go home. I it doesn't. I just don't want to." You all have these days. But basically. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm thankful for that, uh, that I can do this every day. I'm thankful for, for everything, with my, also with my family. And also, I was thankful uh, for, for things like that, like sitting here right now and then and, and, and talking to you and then find out that you have seen White Max. And that's, uh, I was say, you know, uh, yes, you get something back. That, it's, a, it's a always, you, you will get something back. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, some days you think, well, probably uh, you won't get anything back. But uh, once you lose your hope, mm. uh, then it's uh, getting difficult. And so uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, we're in, and then all at Gamescom, of course, it's always very interesting to see. And and then uh, and I've asked is Chris, Chris, if we think back, at, uh, what were we thinking? Uh, what would we have thought in 1986? If somebody would have told us. That in this August 2015, you're sitting in a, a very nice restaurant in, in Cologne, and somebody from Australia came over to get there just to sit next to you. They are spending 90,000 uh, uh, euros or whatever for your uh, for your book, and then you asked me to write the the forward. It was like for especially for for Chris, and that I was so happy for Chris because for Chris it was a dream come true. Uh, uh, and also, it was also a very, uh, uh, a very nice evening for me because I was meeting many people like you, and as you see, wow, that's really something. That's something uh, we did. We, what we did, because Chris we was always working all the time, and I was working all the time. And what we did, it was not. It was worth it. That's I would say. That's the point. It was worth it, and uh, people acknowledge it. And then that's really. Um, Something uh, you, you we sh you always should try the, to make your things with passion. Think about the consumers, and um, if you don't do that, then it's uh, then the, a robot can do your job. I mean, I mean, you are kind of a celebrity. I mean, you are in Wikipedia. Chris is also in Wikipedia. Yeah. You yeah. all have your own entries in Wikipedia, you know, and. Um, it's it's quite. I was so surprised because somebody told me once, "Hun, since when do I have an interest in Wikipedia?" I said, "What do I have?" <laughs> and, uh, and really, I have. And to be honest, this is so accurate. This so true. Where I said, "Well, that's great," and um, yes, and then uh, yes, that's really it, in, indeed. Uh, it means something, and I said, "Well, that's really interesting uh, how people see it." And uh, you know, you know, basically, if you are in a business for such a long time, yeah, of course, I made uh, I made some mistakes when you're young and writing a review, and then you have a competitor, <laughs> and oh, you know, you are fighting, and then and some and and, uh, and of course, there are many there are many competitors that don't exist anymore. Probably because our products were better or survived, whatever, but what the consumer decided. And of, and of course, there are some people that don't like me. Probably they don't like me because uh, I was <coughs> more or less responsible for, for their problems. Um, probably they don't like me because um, they've heard that I'm. They've heard that I'm a, a hard guy or whatever. <laughs> actually, actually, they don't know me. And uh, but that's that's something uh, I can live with because it's a, well I'm uh, such a long time in this business uh, I gave up uh, actually you know I I, I would like everyone to love me but I found out 15 years or 20 years ago it won't work <laughs> once you have a game out or a magazine out there are some people that uh, they will never like you uh, it, never, yeah you know the thing is. For me, uh, like uh, when I was getting my C64 in 1990, and then but when I was playing with my with my grandfather on a Commodore 64 when I was five, you know, and when I later got all those games, so like 20 years ago as a teenager, it was always my my dream to to talk to you and to meet Chris in person, and and then and then I'm sitting there. In, in my city, in a in a Mexican restaurant, and actually eating with Chris, you know, or yeah. meeting you at the at the um, the piano dinner, you know, that's something like awesome for me. I would have not imagined that as um, as a teenager twenty years ago, yeah. because 
as a teenager or as a kid playing those games, you thought those coders and composers, those game makers, they are heroes and they, they earn a lot, you know, yeah. they must be very rich, you know, yeah. <laughs> they have a dream job, like yeah. everything is perfect. Yeah. That was my perspective as a child, you know. Yeah, yeah basically once, uh, one thing, uh, uh, first of all, there will always be people that have more money than you, basically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, our owner, he's very rich. But he knows there is, uh, uh, what's, that's what he told me, compared to Mark Zuckerberg from his Facebook, he made nothing, you know? <laughs> There's always somebody, if you, uh, uh, if you as a pupil, you are looking, at, oh my God, if I would have 100 euro per, or 100 dollar per, per month, that would be great. I would, it would be so, a lot of money. If you have then 1,000, and it's like, oh my God, that would be great. But there's always somebody that has more in the end. In the end, I would say um, Chris wasn't the best businessman and he was always cheated by, by many companies. But I think the most important thing is he always had the chance to do what he likes most. He, he has, could do, uh, produce right music. And that's the most important thing. And it's also something I tell our colleagues um, that uh, uh, they can, uh, you, you know, they get money. And, but the most important thing that makes you happy is that you are doing something that uh, makes uh, you feel good. If, you, if you're an editor and writing an article or making a video and you know that people are reading it, they are watching your video and, and it helps them, that gives you a good feeling. That's even more important than, uh, than only the money. Because even if you get more money, but you don't actually like your job at all, you won't be uh, as happy uh, as you are having a job within the games industry um, if you pr making a product. You know what I mean? It's it, of course everyone wants more money, and of course I'm happy that I'm, well, I, I I have a good living. I'm really thankful for that. But in the end, the most important thing is, and I would say, I'm pretty sure that Chris would would uh, support me. The most important thing for him him is. Uh, he, I think he doesn't need a, a yacht or a, the chat or whatever. He, he, he's, he, he can live. He, uh, he can live his life and make music, and that's I think the most important thing. Because if you start, uh, um, I've met in my, my life. I met a few people uh, that uh, were, their focus was clearly on making money and making millions. And um, but if your main focus is on making money, starting a company and selling the company, uh, this won't work actually, mm -hmm. because this only happens uh, if you're hard working. But if it's your only target, you know, I, I know people that that were working for Compitec once and they left because ah, I built my own company and sell it for millions and then everything is fine. And 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 also some people were asking me. Because I was never the owner of Comp Computech, and I always was just working for somebody. And of course, now I'm the, the managing director, chief operating officer. Yes, uh, but uh, actually, um, if you, my plan was never. To, of course, I wouldn't uh, to become a millionaire and have a, a five Porsches and everything would be great. Yeah, I'm living in a wonderful house and have of course everything is fine. I can afford everything I want to, uh, but uh, it's uh, to become a millionaire or whatever. You can't. First of all, you can't plan it. Second, uh, you have uh, it's some risk, and in the end, uh, I think what I did. Uh, I, I, I never in my life I asked to get more money. Uh, never in my life, never ever. I always was working, and, and somebody offered me more and said, "Well, you're doing having a good job. You're doing a good job, good results. You know, you get the bonus, you get more money." I never. Uh, so basically, money was never my my primary. Of course, I was like, "Ah, oh, I would like to have more money," but that was not the, the thing. Uh, the, I uh, still, when I go to work. I think making uh, good products, and that's the most important thing. And, and if you say, ah, now I'm making a nap, I, I like Angry Birds or uh, Temple Run or Doodle Jump and uh, Flappy Birds, and then I'll be a millionaire, 
this just won't happen. <laughs> Never, uh, and you know, I have met many clever guys, and that they, they will make it. And uh, um, it, but the the guys I know that are in that position and have such money, they didn't plan it. It mm. happened. It only happened. And if you plan it, uh, I become. It, it, it's like I okay. Now I stop working with computing. Now I become a, a, a music star. It just won't happen. It, it, it just won't happen. And also, um, so that that's I think also that's something. If you're doing it for the money, and that's the same with football players. Of course, uh, when my son was asking, how much does a tennis player get? Oh, and a football player and a golf player. And I said, okay, now okay, then I will become the best golf player in the world. No, it just won't happen. Uh, so we can't plan it, and that's I think that's also something important. First of all, you uh, need to to like what you do, to love what you what your work is, um, and of course you need to love your uh, your your wife or your friend or your children. That's that's the most important thing, and you need to like your work, and uh, and, and if you have fun every day, and if you uh, you are going to work. Uh, um, uh, not because you are forced to become be, be, if you're going to work because you like it then it's uh, that's the most important thing and um, uh, and if you can make a living out of it that's a basic thing if you get a lot money or more money uh, you just can't influence it of course if you are lazy uh, and you don't like your job and you don't like the products then it will never happen mm. and the rest is um, yeah uh, you have of course, it, if you are lazy, that's something I tell my sons all the time. One thing you, you you know you can learn all the time and do the best all the time. It doesn't guarantee you that you will become a millionaire or a managing director mm -hmm. or whatever. This you can't. But I tell them if you are lazy and not good making good things, nothing of all of it will happen. That's that's for sure. Well, I guess it was not easy back then because. I remember even my childhood, like 20 years ago, games were never so social, socialized or really accepted as a culture yeah. thing. That just happened a few years ago. But I remember a video game playing is bad, you know. Oh, yeah. It's waste of time and you could do better things. You could go outside there. You, you could you could spend money on 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 good things you know donations whatever yeah. instead of buying video games or computers yeah. or game yeah. consoles so and i guess for you in the early 80s it must it must have been even harder i mean what what did your parents say when you when you decided to well not finish your study but rather go for publishing or video game producing you know i guess that must have been really really hard uh, well, I, 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 I'm very thankful for my, my parents because they actually um, uh, they never had a bad feeling about games. Of course, of course, uh, I remember once when I got the C64 and then I got the tape with uh, 20 games on it and was playing in the first two months more than the pro coding. My father was a little bit disappointed. I, I thought that you were pro programming games, and now he was disappointed because I was uh, playing. And his that was his impression, but and that's really uh, I, I'm happy with that. That um, they they never had a bad feeling about games, and also um, uh, because I was always behaving uh, like a nice guy, and so <laughs> and then there was no brutal or whatever. And uh, and I absolutely know what you mean uh, because all my life. Uh, I had to uh, argue about games and that this is a good thing and it's not basically a bad thing and uh, and also uh, I always and then, uh, during the 90s uh, especially here in Bavaria where we are uh, this was always dangerous and it, it was the, 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 uh, somebody thought that killer games might be completely forbidden here in Bavaria and though we always explain that games are not a bad thing and and always explain um, that um, there are bad books that are not uh, right for for children there are bad movies there are bad there is bad music that is not right for 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 children you know it's uh, the, the the parents job is to 
take care of the children, what they're doing. And anything uh, that you uh, are doing too, too much is, is bad. If you're playing all the time, it's bad. If you're playing all the time tennis, it's bad. If you're playing all the time, uh, uh, reading all the time books and doing nothing else, it's bad. It's if you're only <laughs> watching television and doing nothing. Everything you're doing too much is, is basically bad. Uh, so, and it's the same as games. Uh, if if you, uh, there are games that are right for children, and there are games that are not right for children. And if somebody doesn't take care of the children, what they are doing, what games they are playing, then it's really a problem. But it's the same if they let uh, watch um, brutal movies or uh, porn movies, whatever. Then if they don't care about, that's uh, basically the problem. And now we have it has completely changed. Um, uh, for example, at the uh, last Deutsche Computerspiele Prize, which is now in Ber was in Berlin this year, or um, and uh, this this in the 2016 in Munich, um, you know the the uh, the minister, the secretary uh, 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 from the uh, government, he was standing there uh, and uh, and. Uh, telling his history when he started to play games and that's uh, that's the point now uh, I'm 45 now and now uh, people in my age or all, even a little bit older or younger they have all grown up with games and when uh, 10 years ago uh, you had the problem that uh, probably uh, I don't want to mention any names uh, uh, that somebody was hating games but he actually never never played the uh, uh, there was a danger that uh, it bad uh, games are bad, but now I was today. I was in Munich at the uh, Wirtschaftsministerium, and everybody, everybody there has grown up with games, and some have played even my games. So uh, it's it's different now. Games are socially accepted because uh, every, so they have grown up with games. And it's the same, you know. There was a time when rock music was uh, and Elvis was uh, was horrible. But you know, it, it, it changes, and so it's now now it's different. And if somebody says, okay, basically, uh, uh, something when when I have uh, a presentation somewhere, or uh, I always ask um, who has a smartphone, and of course, everything. Yeah, it's here. Uh, it was at the Lions Club in Herzog Auto last year, and there were people from from 10 to to 80, you know. Uh, and uh, and even the 80 years, uh, yes, they have a smartphone. Yes, they were playing a game. And if they did, it with the children of the, the grandchildren. So that's that's different. So basically, you, now uh, today you can say, basically everyone is playing games, and if it's only Doodle Trump on the smartphone. But everyone is playing, and, and everyone is understanding. And also, we did uh, from from uh, Nintendo did very uh, 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 did a lot to make uh, games socially acceptable. Who has casual seen games? Casual games. Who playing uh, golf on B? <laughs> who didn't do or uh, you know? But my, also, my mother did it. So and everyone. So that's uh, I think that's uh, something that changed. And also the uh, Kawashima. Uh, 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 brain jogging, hin jogging. These uh, <laughs> these products did a lot. That games are socially accepted now, and um, and that's something we don't have to fight, uh, of course. And if somebody's coming up and say, "Hey, yeah, games are brutal," then it's, it's well, I, <laughs> I always tell it it's the same. There are movies, yeah. and and uh, basically, I would say probably it's better to to play a game than to watch television because television in our days is sometimes really really stupid you know there are you know probably scripted reality series they are so <laughs> stupid really stupid they say probably now I, uh, I tell Vincent he was just at the door and then I tell him Vincent I prefer you to play Minecraft than watching Frauenhaus <laughs> <laughs> Creativity or whatever. Interesting. Yeah, well, nowadays television change anyway. I mean, people nowadays like to watch Let's Plays where yeah. other people play the games, some even the games you coded. Did so you that see, must be interesting. I, I, I saw, I've seen a comic strip just a few days ago that somebody was, he was a, what are you doing? You are watching somebody playing a game. How stupid is that? And then in the next uh, picture, he was going to the television, watching 
uh, Manchester United against Bayern Munich playing. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's basically... The same thing, yeah. It's the same thing. But, uh, but you know, uh, what, what my wife and uh, um, we did, we are married now since, 90, uh, since 16 years. Uh, when, he was, when she was pregnant with, with the first uh, son, uh, it was a very uh, hard winter here in Bavaria. We had uh, one meter of snow. And at that time, I was playing um, uh, Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation. And and, the, and we were, I remember it was a Christmas holiday, and so we were going no because she was pregnant, so we were staying at home, and I was playing, and she was watching, and that was for her entertaining and for me, and so it's let's play, you know, probably I would, probably I wouldn't like to watch. I never wanted to watch any people. That's also why I don't watch uh, ESL uh, because I don't. I, it doesn't give me anything. But there are many people that like to watch them, and that's uh, that's okay. And I know, but also I think the games industry found out that um, it's uh, it's uh, it's dangerous for them because usually you. Um, you want to see uh, all the game, and if you know, well, I don't have to buy this game. I just watch somebody playing, uh, somebody playing uh, Super Mario <coughs> um, to the last last level. And uh, but it's uh, it's uh, it's not it's it's, it's okay uh, to watch it. My wife also likes to watch it, and also uh, Luca uh, uh, Vincent likes to watch play uh, uh, Luca playing uh, Gran Turismo, for example. And so it's interesting to see, and then it's. Uh, I would have never predicted this that uh, Gronk and all that stuff that would be, become so popular, but they are, uh, and uh, that's a fine thing, I would say. And uh, it, it because because it shows uh, how important games are. Hmm. Well, you have to be open-minded. I I I just spoke to a co-worker today at at my job that there is um, a channel on YouTube saying uh, uh, called Elders React to, and they actually got elders people like 63 and older to play GTA 5, and you would be surprised how many of those 60, 70, 80 plus years old yeah. guys actually loved killing a um, policeman or something or driving <laughs> over somebody and then realizing okay so the game that my grandchild is playing isn't so boring at all you know it's actually some kind of entertaining yeah. to be to be a gangster and having a gangster life yeah so yeah okay that's interesting yeah that because now because it's now it's just entertainment yeah, that's really funny. Did you see it, by the way, that was just in these days, the real life GTA video uh, that was made by some guys in Russia? They yes, yes, I saw that, yeah. That's really great. You know, that's that's funny because now it's vice versa, it's the other way around. They are like, oh, very funny. So, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so I see you are still in part with it. What I would like to know is, um, when you when you write about or when you when you see games nowadays, did they, games development for you um, was it different back then when you started? I mean, how did you actually start making a game? I mean, nowadays um, you, you don't really have so much to code anymore. I guess you have your like your development kit yeah. and then you put things yeah. together and kind of. But I guess for you it was different back then. Um. At that time, the, uh, the, that was a challenge for me to be a good coder. If you were a good coder, like Andrew Braybrook with Iridium, uh, or, um, or the Bitmap Bros, if you were, then you had the the best product. And, speedball. Uh, yeah, Speedball. Yeah, and then or later on Chaos Engine and or <laughs> or also Sensible Software with Whistball was great. Uh, the, the difference is at that time it was. The biggest challenge is to be a, uh, the, the, the big coder. If you were the big, or Manfred Trends, of course, uh, what he did with Tarikan. Uh, that was the main challenge uh, because uh, then you had really a great product uh, that nobody else had. And uh, and of course, you were thinking about the idea, and the Danger Freak was a good idea, and Kangaroo, for example. But uh, in our days, now, now it's different. At that time, it, it, 
you need um, you, basically you can uh, that's why I never like development for PC because okay. I would like to, fa uh, to have limitations like okay we all have the same computer and we all we have a competition and we have the same computer and who's making the best product and I, I always hated developers for PC like okay you need more more memory you need a an, an, an different graphic card and then we have it's like my, oh, so where is the challenge here? Well, what's going on? And you, you know what? what it's like Wing Commander. Yeah, you always need the newest uh, PC. Then it will work. It's, it's, you can't. Uh, I, you can't work this way. And then also, uh, and then once uh, it, when it was clear that it's coding is just a part of the job, but it's not the most important job. Um, then it was for me it was less uh, interesting because I wanted to prove that I'm the best coder and uh, and once you find out and also it was getting too huge because at that mm. time I had uh, I was coding and then I had one or two graphic artists and one musician and then I had two or three guys doing QA playing the game and that's it but uh, as it moved on uh, the teams were getting bigger and bigger now of course you have sometimes you have a very small simple gaming app like Doodle Jump or Flappy Birds that I would like to code on my own, uh, but it's uh, it's now it's different. Uh, you it's you look at something like Destiny or GTA or whatever. It's it's a huge uh, project and it has nothing at all to do with the uh, the coding at that time and it's. Um, and uh, so it's uh, uh, for me personally, it was like coding, basically coding to 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 have the idea how can I get it work that I have 16 sprites on the screen, parallax scrolling. How can I make it work? And yes, I did it, but it, it didn't. Nobody later on, nobody was asking for it anymore. It's like it was the idea, and that uh, uh, so uh, it, it's you can't compare it. Uh, what the challenges uh, challenges were at that time, and uh, so now it's uh, really a, a multi-million uh, business. Uh, you know, even simple games that you need 10, 20, 30 million uh, euros uh, development budget. For example, now we have the new Anno in our PC Games magazine, or the next Seedler will come very shortly. Completely changed com compared to the preview version that one year ago and it, there are so many people working for it and it's mm. such a huge process Be, uh, developing one single game it's completely different so uh, I, I prefer I prefer to have something competent we have 200 people but working on various projects and uh, and also one thing is uh, it takes so long it takes so long to get the finished product and then uh, something you you uh, on a daily business, you know you can produce a magazine or a website, you can change it and you, you see re realities very soon. But with the game being in development for two or three or four or years, for example, and actually some, some games never might be released, like Titan from Blizzard, as we all know, that's something... Um, <laughs> Well, um, you you always just a, a, a small part of a, a huge mm -hmm. team. And of course, you do, it's a great job to do, but it's nothing uh, uh, that you can compare when when we have seen games like Turrican or, mm -hmm. or Earthworm Jim, uh, programmed by David Perry. I have a, a pretty uh, a good relationship with David Perry at that time. Um, that was one programmer, one great Duck Tenapel was a graphic artist, and that was you know that they were heroes. Now it's like who is Mr. Destiny or who is Mr. World of Warcraft? It's like of course yeah we know some guys from Blizzard, but there are so many mm -hmm. people working for it, and um, but the music is different. You know you uh, you were with music. You know Chris Hulsbeck. You know you know Hans Zimmer. Mm -hmm. You know it's coming out of there brains mainly of course Hans Zimmer has working somebody for him Chris Stone it doesn't have but it's uh, different and with the uh, and also you know from a book uh, uh, the author of a book that's from his uh, uh, brain and uh, and also basically also maybe maybe also uh, that's well 
we still have only Shigeru Miyamoto. You know, he's a really, really uh, he's a, f a genius. And but basically, that's something uh, I don't like about the games business that you you don't know the people behind it because because maybe the company doesn't want the 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 brain to the behind mm. it to become popular or maybe they don't want to or maybe there are so many people and uh, that's different it's, it's it's exactly if i think about it uh, for example the music from command and conquer series everybody knows it's frank Packy, but nobody knows who coded it or who did the graphics that's actually right yeah that's so. actually actually uh, Brad Sperry uh, and and uh, Louis Castle from Westwood were the main uh, people behind it. <laughs> okay, you have the knowledge. Okay. Uh, yeah, but that, that was only funny because um, actually I was the first German journalist to talk to them during a, a CES in in uh, Las Vegas, and that time they were you know there was Dune on the Mega Drive. Uh, that I mean the Dune the the uh, the stretch uh, real time strategy game. And then also Legend of Karandia. Oh and, yes, I know uh, both games. Yeah. yeah. And uh, basically, Dune was uh, something like the prequel to Command and Conquer. And it, but you're right. I only know them because uh, I uh, we were going some years together and all. And uh, for example, when we had in, in the 90s, someday we, we launched a new PC action magazine. And then, of course, I said, well, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to arrange a, a smart uh, front cover story for the first issue. And that was, of course, Command and Conquer 2, uh, Red Alert. And I was calling um, uh, uh, Luis and I said, well, you know, we're going to launch a new magazine. Oh, you're going to launch a new magazine. How can I help you, Hans? <laughs> um, um, you know, and... Uh, then it was uh, so. That's the reason why I remember it. Uh, I remember the programmers, but actually, uh, and of course, I, I remember. I only remember them because uh, uh, for me, David Perry, what he did with Aladdin on Mega Drive and Cool Spot and Earthworm Jim, was unbelievable. Really unbelievable. And uh, um, so, but you're right. It, it's it, that's what I said. It, it, you don't actually <laughs> don't know it. And, and, uh, and that's uh, you know you, you know Miyamoto games you know the Pikmin and then because but you also know the truth is it's not Miyamoto is not doing everything there are many 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 people working for that and you, for example the new Zelda you know they they coming also to the stage and uh, um, but it's uh, yeah that's a difference that uh, that's a difference to to uh, compared to the 80s and 90s. Uh, that there are huge projects and uh, and and also the pressure is very high and also on the company and the, the pressure is very high that they're gonna get um, good reviews that they you know and also every everybody has to take care that they have uh, uh, that we have regular news and, and previews on our websites and in magazines because it's a destiny for example um, there's it's um, you know, at that time there was coming a disc with Lemmings. It's like, oh, very funny, <laughs> and then it turned out to be a huge hit. Yeah. Uh, but but in, in in our days now, you have blockbusters, and you there's so many so much pressure on it, on on the media and in everyone that it's uh, that's the, the difference. At that time it was funny. Yeah, let's let's look at you know products at the show. And it's like, oh, well, look, well, maybe we do something, maybe not. And now it's clear that there's uh, so much pressure on the editor in chiefs and then the staff, and probably sometimes even on, on, on me, they are calling me, oh, Hans, what can we do about new product? You know, it's cost a fortune to make, and how can you help us? It's like, oh, I am. Yeah, but, but nowadays you have different options. I mean, many games are actually funded by Kickstarter. Oh, yeah. And um, I mean, I, I was just having an interview uh, two weeks ago with, with the guy who works on um, Equinox Deep Descent. Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> so yeah, also, also kickstarted by an Austrian company and um, developed by a Serbian company. So it's pretty interesting. And sh just today they they announced that there's a sequel of Battle Tash, you know. Okay. So so the future goes into two into two um directions it seems. Into indie 
indie game development, yep. oh, yeah. which, which are good. smarter studios. That's, that's really good because yeah. there are some really nice products. That's something you can compare with the good old days. Um, uh, that's uh, yeah. That has more more personality. But also, uh, I'm not the best friend of Kickstarter because for one reason, because um, many people really give a lot of the money to products, and m many of the products never see the light of day, and there were a lot of disappointment is out there. And uh, though my, I'm afraid that Kickstarter once will have a very bad image because it's like, yeah, I had, I was uh, pitching, uh, pledging for, for ten products, and eight of them never uh, were released. And then also, um, said some gaming celebrities, superstars, um, get millions of millions of millions. And like then Gilbert, for example. For example. Or the other way around, they get millions and they suddenly say, oh no, that's not enough. Uh, but, I, but I guess Ron Gilbert, for example, he wouldn't go and run with the money. <laughs> no, he wouldn't, but it, it's, is, it really, is it really clever? Or on the other way, I really like Sony. I like, love the guys at Sony. But, uh, uh, and you know, that to have a Shenmue, to ask the fans to give millions. And when it's been published by, by Sony, I, I just I don't, just don't understand it. Um, I understand for a certain reason that you want to make sure does anyone want this product out there. I understand this. And if you say for that you have a small amount and say, you know, we just want to find out whether there is a market. And then we have a very special occasion for us, the, the very diehard fans to be... Uh, to get the dinner with Chris, for example, <laughs> uh, well, that's something special. But I think it's dangerous uh, when, when, when companies, really multi-billion companies, use Kickstarter. I, I, I don't think that Kickstarter uh, has been founded to to support billion dollars because actually, at Computech, I would never have the idea to say. Oh well, we're going to have a special issue of a magazine. Give us fifty thousand euro, then we have a special issue, uh, retro games. I would never have the idea. It's like no, it's we are a company. It's our job to do this. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And basically, you know, basically we have Kickstarter. It's every day on the on the newsstand. If somebody is buying our magazine, wonderful. We can afford to make a new issue. And so, but, but, but basically, I would say Kickstarter is great. And if we would have uh, had a Kickstarter back then in 1986, you guess what I would have do, done at that time? I wouldn't have asked uh, Rainbow Arts to give me a contract and take 80% of the revenues, uh, and 10% of the rest uh, is for me, and 10% is for whatever. I would have, uh, that would be great, but it's. Uh, but uh, but also one thing uh, is for, uh, for sure, um, you always need some businessmen. You, you know there are uh, creative people making good games or music or whatever or good music uh, or, or even movies, for example. But there are no businessmen, and that's uh, something that some people really need. They need support from the business side. Uh, and, and, and and also time uh, table planning, yeah, schedule. They need help from there that, that somebody's they you know what to do, and uh, they need to get uh, assistance. I would say, and that's uh, I th I would say um, well, maybe the problem now we have very uh, uh, um, very popular uh, space game from Germany that has been a big uh, Kickstarter success, and um, but. If they don't have the assistance or the know-how on the business side, things might get out of control. And I, I, I find it very interesting to see uh, there's a certain guy about Star Citizen, uh, you know, who I'm talking about, uh, always like, this product will never happen or whatever. It's very interesting to see uh, because that's, uh, that there is a, was a, is a publishing industry. There's a reason for that, publishing games or music or movies. Because there are certain things you need to do, and you need to know what you do. And if you if you just you look, uh, you and me sitting just here, oh, somebody gives us some money. What can we do now? <laughs> let's make a movie about the good old times, and then let's make it. And then if nobody tells you, you know, 
that's the time schedule. You yeah. need to do this and that, and that's yeah. your money. And don't yeah. give, if somebody doesn't assist you and you are not the good business yeah. guy, then it's, you might get in some trouble. And, and that's a, and that is a, the danger of Kickstarter, in my, my, my opinion, that uh, many people will be disappointed because, you know, uh, not everybody has millions. And then some of them, it's just, okay, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm pledging 50 euros. And, uh, and they are not earning a lot. And it it's means a lot for them, 50 euros. And if this product never comes, then they will be disappointed and w once in a while they won't uh, return to Kickstarter. And yeah, that's, that's a big issue. Yeah. Yeah, that's and true. I'm pretty sure that Kickstarter knows about it. They need, don't need any advices by me. <laughs> but that's my personal... <laughs> my personal first of all, I was very happy and I, I, I remember, I really remember when, uh, when Chris was contacting me a few years ago for the Tariqan CDs. And he said, ah, you know, Hans, I, uh, there, there's something new, and what do you think? Is there something here in Germany, like a Kickstarter? I said, no, it, there's nothing like Kickstarter. But Chris, I can guarantee you, if you are going to, to have something, launch something on Kickstarter, all of our magazines will write about it. Just give me the screenshots, information, and I will make sure that in, on every website, in every magazine, we will write about it. I will give you the support. And also did it with the piano book uh, collection and all, and that stuff. Um, so I remember at that time when we were watching it, oh, there's coming money, great! And, and also Tommy Tellerico was asking me, and uh, and, uh, and of course we have the media to to get the, the this news out to the people there. And uh, I remember the good thing, but but if I uh, when I talk to people right now, um, then it's like um, that. First, the first thing I hear is, "Oh yeah, uh, I, I spent so much money, and most of the products never have been released." That's, That's actually a change, yeah. Yeah. So well, on the other hand, there's a second development I've I I noticed like in the last year actually is that a lot of old companies, game development companies, are reborn. For example, 3D Realms, you know, <laughs> or Sierra suddenly oh, releasing yes. a new Sierra? King's Quest. So you said you would like to see a new Wing Commander. Yes. Instead of Star Citizen, but maybe Star Citizen is better. But gee, it's... <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, it, it doesn't actually. It doesn't. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering. Actually, I'm wondering that uh, um, Electronic Arts had, had bought so many companies and brands, and so many like Comanico and all of the brands disappeared, and they don't use it uh, again. So uh, it's as, as always, you know. You, you also have Guitar Hero, a fantastic thing, and uh, of course it, that's something to do with a, a company. When you find out that somebody likes something, then you want to make more money out of it. Uh, what you do, you every year you come with new uh, version, and, and and once in a while it will get boring because you can't have so many new ideas every year, and that's the basic that's the basic problem. Um, and, and sometimes it's the same in the mu movie uh, industry that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> You, that's a, a that's a system that you have in a company. Uh, once you find out that something is going well, then you will have uh, as many uh, iterations that uh, as some people will like. And once in a while, you will come to a point that people don't like it anymore. And uh, for example, if you would would have have a, 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 a common and combat game every three or four years. Um, then it would still be successful. It's, for example, with Seedler, the set from US of the Blue Bites, for me it's Blue Bites. Um, you don't have a, uh, you didn't have, have a, a yearly sequel of, of Settlers. But from time to time you have a new Settler. And, and that or also Anno, for example. If, you're, if you take your time, then you can have brands for 20 or 30 years. Because I remember when I was uh, having the front cover about Settlers from Volker Verdi, part one for Amiga, and, we, and still Settlers now is popular. The next Settler is in the making, and we will have a report in PC Games Magazine in the next few months of the new version. Uh, once uh, you always have to be careful. 
And then also, if you have an, 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 a musician releasing a new CD, it's very uh, it might get uh, boring. And uh, for example, for, with uh, with uh, Michael Jackson, if you don't like it, it, it doesn't matter. He was only releasing CDs every five, six, seven, eight, nine years. Yeah, absolutely. But also Prince was also is also a genius, but he was releasing too many CDs, and that's. Uh, but but basically, I would say it's always the same. Uh, you don't always you 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 shouldn't always give the people what they want. Uh, because they always want more and more and more. It's, it's the same with chocolate. If you uh, want to chocolate and then next, another one and another one and another one, uh, somebody has to take care. No, that's too much. Too many, too many movies, too many games, and that's something we have to. Uh, uh, somebody. It's like with the Guitar Hero. Now it's coming back again. But the Guitar Hero was so brilliant. But as soon as uh, a company is. Uh, uh, getting uh, uh, their hands on it and say, oh, you can make money, then they're always uh, squeezing out as much money as possible. And it's the same, of course, here with the, with the computing as a publishing house. First of all, we need to uh, 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 have the money to pay uh, uh, the bills uh, and to pay the, the, the colleagues. But um, you have to be... Uh, yeah, somebody should be careful with it. And for example, the break that Electronic Arts took with Need for Speed, I think that's a good thing. It was a good thing. Probably they shouldn't release a new Need for Speed every year. Probably they. And also, you you know, Gran Turismo, for example. Every new Gran Turismo is great, perfect. And my son is always is still playing Gran Turismo on the PlayStation, on the old PlayStation here, because we don't have a new Gran Turismo. Uh, because there are some brands like Settlers or Gran Turismo where it really works, and all they and all I think with Tomb Raider now they um, they found a good way to uh, to to keep the, the product the brand alive, because the brand was nearly dead when they were releasing a new Tomb Raider every day, uh, every year, sorry, every day, uh, and now when when you start releasing also Uncharted for example, they never made the mis mistake that they were releasing uh, Uncharted every year. Every Uncharted so far has been a big, very big product. And that's, uh, I would say, that's a big learning for, for the games industry to be, to be to take care of the brands and the products and not to give the, uh, and not let the, the financial guys guys uh, uh, rule the company saying, yeah, we'll have to need it, we need to have it every year. And that's uh, because that's dangerous then, because then you can kill something that probably well, yeah, I think that's something we should write a book about it. How to keep brands alive. So that is why you never made a Danger Freak 2 or something? By the way, now I can hear with the speaker. <laughs> okay, nice. Oh, no, uh, to be honest, uh, I never was in the position to think about uh, uh, have, having a sequel because none of the products were so successful. But I, don't, I, said, no, I never thought about it. Of course, I, I was thought about, I had Kangaroo 2, but that was basically to make some money for my studies. Uh, no, but uh, um, uh, I, I never, we, uh, after Danger Freak, we, were, I, we never had the, the idea of doing sequels because at that time, there were no sequels. Of course, we all remember Pit Stop and Pit Stop 2. Yeah, of course, Pit Stop 2 was much better, but uh, um, it would have been boring, to be honest, to have after Danger, Danger Freak 2 and after Rock and Roll, and it would have been boring. And uh, because you, you, no, it would have been boring, to be honest. Because I didn't do this to make money. Of course, yes, I got money for that. But it was the, the challenge was to, to develop to find the code with them on the rock and roll was uh, technically speaking the most difficult one of, for me make it work and make it look as good as the, the or nearly as good as the Amiga version and that was the, the challenge and to say rock and roll two is like uh, okay uh, somebody can ro draw new levels but to make the code. Uh, no. Did anyone in on the uh, Andrew Bray book? Did he never made Oridium 2 or <laughs> Heraldry 2 or Alicat 2? No, he never did. He never it's, did. it's a good point that you mentioned it because I was reading reviews about Kangaroo 2 and a lot of people said 
bad things about it, saying it's the same game, basically. Yeah, it's yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it's not something I'm proud of. But actually, the reason was uh, I had the chance to get make some money with it, and I was uh, 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 in Bamberg, and I was living uh, uh, paying for it on my own, and that's what. And also, it was more or less uh, the thing was for me. It was the uh, the first time to um, to do everything on my own, uh, producing a disc, the package, everything on my own. That that was more the reason for me to to do this once. To to uh, it was uh, actually that point. It was not about the game. It was more about the process of being your own publisher. And uh, that uh, and so I'm not proud about the game because I didn't change a lot. Uh, to be honest. <laughs> Was this one screen and there, but but uh, it uh, was a different thing. Ah, oh, ah, yes, I was a, a great fan of Step 64. Julian but, Rippen was the editor at that time, I know. And there was once a review of Danger Freak for in Step 64. I still have it somewhere here, page. I'm really proud of it. Yeah, and they said that the C64 version of Danger Freak is pretty good, and the Amiga version is crap. Oh, Maybe. yeah, yeah. They were right because Danger Freak was a game for C64, and uh, and uh, I didn't do the Amiga version. It was just a conversion of my game, and they were absolutely right. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because in an interview about Danger Freak, you mentioned that you were very proud of it because it had parallax crawling in in different speeds and different directions, and that was kind of a first. Yes, in 1988, the main thing is parallax scrolling in different angles, I would say, like here, you know, see, this is something we had, but we also had um, uh, this effect, that you had the, uh, actually moving behind it. And that was actually something I had before uh, Manfred Trends. So, I'm very <laughs> proud of it. Yeah, that was really, it was, I think it was, it, in the first level with the with the car and then and, and the, the horizon that was this kind of parallax, but in the third level with the way flying the, the small airplane and we had real paradox scrolling in different speed and that was quite tricky to produce it at the, but it uh, still looks fine yeah it's I'm really proud of it because I remember how um, I had the idea how to do it and how it might work and um, and that was a that was the main thing, and that, that's why I like the C64. There are so many things possible. And for example, I remember <laughs> Uridium was something, uh, or also Nebulus uh, from John uh, Phillips, or uh, Hawkeye, of course, from Mario van um, All of them they had, and, and of course Wispball. Wispball was uh, unbelievable, and uh, that was something. Uh, I like the C64 because the C64 was a much better machine uh, than uh, Spectrum, for for example, or uh, or uh, uh, Amstrad or Schneider CPC. That was really the, the different. That the, the C64 was uh, uh, really a, a piece, a genius piece of hardware hmm. with the SID, the with the SID, Chris could tell you a lot, the SID and the Bowie IC, the graphics chip and the 64 kilobyte of RAM, that was really uh, unbelievable what you could make of this machine. And then Did nobody cares about what can you do of a, out of an a iPhone. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, but back, back then when, when the iPhone platform started in 2007, people were actually surprised by the quality of the games yeah. that were possible, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, like um, as Asphalt, which I think was the most oh, yes. famous yeah. racing game on yeah. the on the iPhone platform. Like, oh my God, you know. I think it's on my own iPhone, yeah. <laughs> but because my, my 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 son has downloaded it, yeah. So yeah, um, it's 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 also interesting um, because it's similar to the story that that David Crane told me. You know, co-founder yeah. of Activision, he said that this, the VCS. Can I tell you, David Crane, yeah, little computer people, Pitfall 1, Pitfall 2, uh, uh, yeah, well, that's really little computer people, that's something, uh, Ghostbusters, and all that stuff, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 just, just a few weeks ago, I've been watching a video on YouTube with David Crane. He was, 
David Crane actually was the first, for me, the first popular programmer, developer. David Crane. And then the, I guess the second name uh, I remember was Chris Hubbard. Uh, Ron Hubbard, sorry, sorry. Ron Rob, Hubbard. Ha- Rob, Rob Hubbard. Rob Hubbard, yeah. That's David Crane and Rob Hubbard. This one, developer, and the other one here, uh, music. Yeah, yeah. Rob. Um, Rob, Rob, Rob Hubbard, the, yeah. Command on the music thing on the spring. These were actually the first, uh, and then uh, and then also little computer people, um, yeah. And what did you say? Sorry, I, I yeah, yeah, I just want to say, David. Yeah. When I did an interview with David Crane, he told me that that yeah, he, like, he, he yeah, okay. what? But like, it, you know, it would be the same. I would like to do an interview with David Crane because I would sit here just like you interview me. It's like the same because there are basically every you know, all human beings are the same, <laughs> but some people mean more to you. And <laughs> David Crane would be some somebody where I would say. You know, you were somebody who had influence on the you. Yeah. So now I'm sorry. Now <laughs> you you, you want to say you would like to sit on my side yeah. and interview? Well, I mean, it was it was pretty easy. I wanted to interview him, but I couldn't get him by email, so I actually just called him. You know, and um, I was on the phone, and I was like. Am I talking to David Crane? And he was like, yes, indeed. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, oh my God, I'm finally talking to David Crane, you know? <laughs> real pioneer at Atari or Activision, real pioneer, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the, the analogy was that I wanted to draw is he told me that he, he, he planned the games like, um, what can I do with the console other than uh, Pong, you know, the VCS. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how he actually, this is actually how he, um, how he developed the game. He, he was thinking about what, what could I do to, to do something new on the console, you know, and this is how he got to, um, to do pitfall, you know, and then then only the, 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 uh, the signature of the Activision logo uh, uh, on on, on the, the screen was great. All these colors and that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So this is what you say. You you did a game and you're trying to 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 learn to new techniques and make something out of it that even the creators of Commodore thought was not possible. You know. Probably yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I remember having an interview with um, David Hain, who who did um, develop the 128, and he told me that when they tried to make it, um, when when they tried to make the 664 mode in the Commodore's 128, they had a problem because the coders did tricks, you know, like illegal illegal yeah. upcodes and so on yeah. that they didn't know about because they were not documented and it was really hard to get that all in so that all yeah. games and such things would still run on the 128 yeah. so yeah. oh yes that's true <laughs> so example, you remember yeah uh, my second game um the best thing about Bad Cat was uh, once again the music of Chris, uh, the, the the title music for Bad Cat with the real drum sounds. Yeah. Uh, but actually, this drum sounds uh, didn't work on a later version of the SID because it was actually so- also something like a, a mistake. So it. They did was- a bug fix on the um, um, on the um, um, uh, eighty-five eighty. Yeah. On the later SID revision, they removed the bug that was that was giving the possibility to play digital uh, samples. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's. But that was really, I. I uh, we had a we had a compilation where they were also recommended to have Bad Cat on the on the on the soundtrack or on the compilation because of that because I uh, I really remember that was something special and that was because of a mistake and it's true yeah. it's interesting because chris told me that when the, when you when you guys found out the different correct uh, correct uh, characteristics of the new sound chip actually chris changed his music routine so that yeah. the later games you coded and he did the music for would play yeah. right on all c64 yeah. models you know yeah yeah, that's something you have to do. It's like uh, today, uh, Apple re- releasing a new uh, iOS, and then 
you have to change all your apps and everything, the change the resolution and whatever. It's uh, yeah, that's a uh, typical um, uh, thing. But uh, that they used to now. But at that time, basically, that's what I said. Uh, uh, everything is the same all the time, and you don't have to think about it. But now, every time, if you have an app, like a game TV, every time. Uh, Apple is re or, or Google, or they're releasing new versions of their uh, system. Uh, then you have to think about, oh, do I have to change something? Does it, does it still work? That's uh, yeah, that's uh, the, the the usual uh, thing you have to do to, in our days. But back then, you you couldn't you couldn't apply a patch, you know. <laughs> no, no, that's something I, I that's something I, I also hated about the the, the PC uh, market always. I, I preferred the C64 or Amiga or console market, when a product is finished and it's finished, and here you have it on the floppy. You are here you have it on the, the cartridge, and that's it. And then and also on the console market, that you know the the big Q and A department that uh, in Liverpool for Sony, for example, um, they were testing the product and until everything is fine, and then the product is really fine, and it's it's finished. And uh, and on the PC market, you it's always like okay, we're gonna have a patch. I, I always thought it's unbelievable. How can you do that? You have to finish a product before uh, uh, before you release it. It's like you know what Ascaron with the Anstoß, what they did, or uh, or uh, the latest they... the latest Batman was was yeah, a prime no, example. It's great. It's, it never thought would happen in the console business. Because there is a department saying no, you t you're not allowed to release it, and that's something uh, I don't understand. Because it's like uh, uh, sending a printing a magazine and then uh, sending uh, oh well you know some <laughs> something like sorry you can't do it. it's only for a musician. You you have to finish your your CD or album and now it's done. Of course you are, and then that's, that's what I meant uh, before. That you need a system that somebody tells you, you know, you have this amount of time and you have to get it right, because there are somebody would never get it finished. But that's not because uh, um, mainly it's not because somebody uh, uh, is never satisfied. Mainly because somebody is just too lazy to make it right. It's like oh, mm -hmm. and that's something I don't understand. And it, because you can't, uh, you, you can't. Uh, Release a product that is not finished because when when we are going to the cinema and watching uh, then the new Star Wars in December or whatever, then it needs to be finished. It's not like oh, what do you think? It's the first version. What should we? It's uh, no, no, next. We have a new version in three months' time. Uh, please don't mention the various versions of Star Wars now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that was my thought actually. You know, <laughs> George and Lucas. You know you have their party, Godfather. That's Godfather one, two, three. That's it. Perfect. Okay. And of course, I'm pretty sure that uh, the editor would say, "Oh, I would like to change," but now it's that's the product, and that's how it is. And uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. I I didn't play any second of the new Batman because it crashed right after the intro. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, that's not good. That's not good because. Uh, next time, uh, the next Batman game, you will think about. Uh, uh, it's not, that's. I, I don't. I can't imagine how something like this can happen uh, at uh, at Warner. I, I just can't imagine how it. Well, but also I couldn't imagine that something <laughs> like uh, this happened at yeah. Volkswagen, by the way. Yeah, so, that's so true. So the size of a brand or a company doesn't. Uh, um, doesn't prevent uh, uh, failures. But I guess I I have never heard of a game before that actually was removed from the market because it didn't play on most PCs. No, I don't. No, no. So, I guess that's the first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and probably and that they are not proud of it. And that's really a shame because it's a good game on the console. Where it's, that's really that they the Batman brand is really great and they are producing good game. Well, but that's why it happen when you're getting lazy and they, oh yeah, it's it's, it's okay, it's okay, let's do it. It's, so, and but on the other hand, you need somebody, to, for example, to say Chris, Chris, it's fine now, it's finished, it's okay, wonderful, 
and not like no no i think i have to change it <laughs> yeah i mean i can i can really uh, i can really uh, see what you mean because i was sitting in in a um in a uh, at revision like yep. some years ago next to oliver lindau who was a proficient at uh, star by software you know oh i remember his name yes yeah and and she's still active in the scene on the C64. Really? Yeah, yeah. Rolling, did he didn't he make Rolling Ronnie? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ah, I, I guess I haven't heard his name since. Uh, I was in Bochum. I had a meeting with Mr. Croft many many years ago. Uh, yeah, by the end of the eighties, beginning of nineties, yeah. I think. Nineties. So, so he he's back since five years to the Commodore 64 uh, demo scene actually, and. This year he is releasing a new graphic adventure. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, so and how many units can you actually sell of a C64 game nowadays? Uh, from what I heard, like 50 or something. I guess they only do it for a hobby, not, not really for earning money. Yeah. Oh, I should not think about King Kangaroo D3. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, as I said, he shouldn't do it for the money. So. <laughs> So you won't you wouldn't do a Kickstarter or something? No. Um... <laughs> it would be funny to see, uh, you know, it would be funny to see Kangaroo this real Kickstarter just to find out is there anybody out there? And just imagine, probably some guys like you would turn up and it's like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> But, but but wasn't wasn't um, Genesis Stars done this way? I think it was also yeah. it was also um, funded by Kickstarter. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not too far off, actually. Yes, actually, but because it was also funny because uh, actually they didn't have the right for the brand, but uh, <laughs> Black Forest, did. Black Forest games, yes, right? Yeah. They didn't have the right for the game, for the brand. Somebody else, uh, a former Rainbow Arts uh, manager, had the rights. Um, he, he is a guy who moved to to the United States long, long time ago with other four other guys. And he had the rights for the brand. He bought. I actually that's something heard I just only last week. He bought the rights for all of the Brainboards brands. So maybe I should ask him if he has the brands uh, the rights for the Danger Weekend Soldier. But uh, but that's something. Uh, and he, but he got, got a fair deal with uh, Black Forest Games. Okay, that's yeah, interesting. And yeah. You would, now you would like to know whom I'm talking about. <laughs> if you want to tell, I'm not forcing you to, to tell me. No, it's uh, but it, no, no, I, I've been told that, uh, somebody from Factor Five had all the rights. I, I could tell it, but I won't tell you the name. But he actually had the, the rights now, and they had a fine deal. So, but that's something they did. They just. Use the brand without having the rights. That's that's actually not very clever, uh, but in the end it turned out to be okay for everyone. And uh, so. well, the same happened with lots of the rings, pit hole, holiday um, hotel that also was stopped by the movie company because they didn't have the right to. But they yeah. started a Kickstarter without asking for permission. So. This can yeah. this can always happen, yeah. You know what I mean with you know, in terms of business, somebody needs it, needs to assist them. That's what I mean with uh, business legal rights. All that stuff is it's a different uh, thing that some people don't think about. But but I guess I guess what also helped them was that Chris did the music for it. You yes, know? that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think that was that was the main for me. It was one of the main reasons why it was successful, because we we have so many Chris Hülsbeck fans out there in the world, including me, by the way, <laughs> uh, that will support anything. And also, to be honest, that was the reason we had once at Computech we had a, 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 a mobile game uh, released, um, and uh, in the my my and and the the soundtrack was done by Chris, because my idea was okay. We have a mobile game for, for, for iOS and Android, and uh, let's uh, uh, to make uh, uh, sure that many people will buy it. Let's have some music by Chris. <laughs> Just the same. Uh, that was my my thought. Let's include music by Chris because first of all, it's good music, and second of all, there are so many Chris Hulsbeck fans out there uh, that will support it. 
And, and that's uh, very, very one interesting thing. Uh, I, I'm, I, we all know that there are many, many Chris Hülsberg fans out there, and all the, also many Tommy Tellerico fans out there, uh, musicians. Uh, but there are not so many Hans Ippisch fans out there that would uh, support Kicks, uh, Kangaroo D3. But we all know we have uh, some fans of Chris Roberts out there, I've heard. <laughs> but he's one. I'm pretty sure. You know, I'm pretty sure if David Perry and Doug Tenapel and Edward Schofield and Tommy Tellerico would join forces and say, we're going to have Earthworm Jim uh, on PlayStation. I'm pretty sure that this would go through, through the roof. <laughs> Probably well, we should tell them. <laughs> well, CinemaVerse announced they are going. They are going to release. Um, it came from the desert for the Mega Drive. So yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> for the Mega Drive. For the Mega Drive. Yeah. You know, also known as Genesis. Yes. Yes. yes of what about the C64? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Is that actually the sound or what? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, on the Mega Drive. No, but, but, but actually I can't tell, we don't have a Sega magazine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, um, there are still retro fans out there, you know. Um, oh. but, but one thing I would like to know, um, what's your opinion about the, the new adventure that Ron Gilbert is doing? Because he was saying on his development blog that the graphics will be old school, like Monkey Island. But yeah. not the sound, because he wrote that he wouldn't like people to have pleading ears from <laughs> from the awful sound oh. abilities yeah. they had in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Well, that's 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 true. Uh, we we all like the pixel uh, retro style. That's something we can live with. Even though that's very interesting, it never looked like this in the past. Because at that time, uh, you know, the the Röhren fans of television, the CRTs, that, yeah, you know, the tallies just were not sharp enough, so you never actually saw the pixels, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, like you see now, you know, uh, uh, you know that the tie that Chris had, the pixels were, yeah. you, you actually never, we never saw it this way. So, um, but we actually are get uh, also like pixels the movie, we 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 are fine with it. But with the sound, in, indeed, it's difficult. Ah. I, 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 to be honest, I like the basically I always say in music. I like the original versions of, of music tracks, and I never like live CDs. And also, I prefer Chris released it last week. You know the, the original C64 versions of the sounds. Also, on one track of Soldier. Uh, but when you have a new game, uh, then you should have a. a sound that um, sounds like it's from our days, yes, I think so. But it's it's good that you mentioned it because that is something Sega was complimented for, that they included the original music when they released Outrun Coast to Coast in 2006. Uh -huh. uh, you know what, what I have here on my, uh, the original, I have here, um, I, I have to show it because it's really I'm really proud of it. Uh, the first game music I really lo loved, uh, li uh, liked was just one moment. It's like uh, it was in 1986 when I was in a discotheque at the for the first time, and there was one sound uh, I really liked it, and was that was actually the first game music I said, "Wow, that's great!" And, and now I can start it. Uh, you know. You know it? Oh yeah. What is it? Space area. Can I see it? Yeah, space area, space area, space area. Yeah, yeah I remember space yes. area. That's actually that's space area too, but that's as close as it can get. And that's <laughs> uh, I I prefer the original version because it I really it was in 1986 because I I remember it because I was 2016 and I was allowed to go to the discotheque. Yeah, you know Sunday afternoon or. Or Friday I did until you know ten o'clock, and they had the arcade. And there was and there was a space sharing machine, and and, and I really loved uh, this uh, sound. I really fell in love with this sound, and I always was standing there listening to this sound, and 
and I, I was very proud uh, when I, by the way, when I met the, uh, Yu Suzuki for the first time. That's also also a very special moment for for me because Yu Suzuki was for me space area and then Outrun and then of course a virtual fighter and then say and then all that stuff that was and also a space area. So Yu Suzuki and space area. Uh, and the, and you have it here, and then also I have it in my current playlist, by the way. So uh, it, it, I, I also have new CDs, all the new things on my. I have, but I also have Space Area. And uh -huh. you know, the other thing is that my 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 boys like it. Uh, you know, oh, that's an interesting thing to do. We have a test. Uh, whether, but that's very easy to find out. Just about one moment, because you will know it immediately, and that's the orchestra version. You could also hear it at. Uh, uh, you could so you could hear it also at video games live. So, how many seconds in? Mm. You can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hmm. So. Achtung, ein. Snake. Snake? Oh no, I did I didn't know that. Ah, okay. No no I I don't know that, sorry. That's that's Metal Gear Solid, uh, uh, the, the first one for the new PlayStation at that time with 3D. And I uh, no, it was for the PlayStation 2. And that I, I never the... played that actually. Oh, okay. But this is it's also one of the greatest uh, things. So you know what I have here Space Area and Metal Gear Solid. And that's actually from the uh, London Philharmonic Orchestra. And also, um, that's uh, one of the biggest parts of uh, video games live from 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 Tommy Tellerico with the orchestra because it's so moving. And also, mm. uh, every morning my, my 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 son is driving with with me to the city, and I'm going to uh, bring him to the school. And he always uh, this week, he, every day he started uh, this uh, song in the car, and <laughs> uh, um, because it's really great. So. Because and that, that's I think that's a, that's a very important point that some ga some games are getting old and other and and are not as good as they were at that time. That's true. Some are not aging so well. But I I know what you mean because my ringtone actually is Power Drift and I also have the ringtones from summer oh, games. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Power Drift. Yeah. So. Actually, I don't remember that tune, by the way. How about oh. this? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, hmm? you will immediately know that your phone is ringing because it's really, yes, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't remember that, but it's yeah. And, and I also have I also have the arcade version. Yeah. Okay. This sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> great. So. Yeah. So it's it's actually great because I was having an interview with with him too, but the difference here is he he took me it took me ten years to find him, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that's that's the difference. Um, people like Chris or something, they are easy to find. But people who are less known, you know, they are really hard to find, especially if they have a, a name that is pretty common, you know. Yeah. For example, Chris Crick from Epix, the sound manager back in the oh. days. Okay. Like, there are 50 people with his name in, in the state of California, you know. Is he responsible for the sound of winter games? Yeah, of the edition, Winter Games the edition, the later ah, version. Yeah. But but I, I remember one of the most important sounds of it was Winter Games by cheap ski, uh, ski jumping. That was a very very special sound. Vroom, vroom, I can't. That was so moving, and uh, and that also was Summer Games and Winter Games and Summer Games 2 especially. These were um, 
unbelievable product. And he did also the sound effects for Maniac Mansion, Zack McCracken and such ah, such okay. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm I'm talking to a lot of pioneers back in the days. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. That's, that's, good. that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a, that's really good thing because uh, yeah, uh, uh, when I was making my presentation for the culture forum, so we have a culture, you know, very important the culture forum. <laughs> um, I was uh, 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 looking for information about creative tennis and then space and and uh, space and all that thing, and um, I'm pretty sure we would have had. Skype and internet and and, and, uh, and digital camera at that time. There would be plenty of information, but now it's really e difficult to find a screenshot or anything about it. And uh, and, and I'm pretty sure that that uh, this is really something special when uh, um, when some when we look back and with the work you are doing, that uh, yeah, it's something. It's it's history. Uh, Sometimes it's more history, sometimes it's less history, sometimes it's uh, just entertaining. Uh, but, but to keep this, uh, how did it work, how did it come to that? Because um, uh, uh, otherwise we would forget about it. And, 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 and some people would forget why, how did it come that uh, the games industry started? What was mm. the reason for that? Because as you asked me, how did it come actually? Uh, I, I was in the middle of, of the wave and I, I didn't plan it. it was one thing came to another. Probably you know the butterfly effect. Of course. Somebody made the decision that uh, there should be a computer room at the gymnasium at the school where I was. And without that computer room, I would have maybe if this computer would have been there two or three or four years later, I would have never been in touch with the computer that way. I would have never. Uh, uh, Ask for a computer as a Christmas gift. I would have never bought a happy computer and 64 magazine, read an advertising, and ask, uh, sent my game there. So, and, and that's how it came to that. And that's mm -hmm. very interesting too. So, I, I never had the plan. I woke up and said, Now I want to be a computer programmer. That I want. <laughs> it was, it, it was things were coming together. And, and, and I think that's very interesting uh, when, when you see. Uh, when you ask David Crane what was his aim, and uh, that, uh, and then, and I think basically, did anyone say uh, of them that they did it for the money? No, no, no. Not at all. Everyone said because yeah. it was a passion, it was something yeah. moving them. And, David uh, Crane told me he he went to the arcades and he played so much of shooting games, so he decided his next game won't be a shooting game. <laughs> so it won't be. Won't okay. be. Yeah. Interesting. So because he would always he would always do something that that um, that was the opposite of of what was hip at the moment. But and you say and you see and Manfred Trent was in the arcade and the next thing he wanted to do was to have a game exactly like this. And that's why we had the problem with Katagis in our time because he was try to reproduce this game as accurate as possible. Yeah, so, but 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 from what I know, actually, you you had to you had to do a conversa uh, conversion of it. That was kind yes, of a yes. deal, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that the deal was uh, struck afterwards. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It was causing problems. It's the same like with China Sisters and Mario. It was the same problem. It was uh, not funny. But you know, uh, I my 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 dream. Uh, I was playing Space Harrier, and I knew that I couldn't do this on the C64. So, uh, and of course, Chris Butler, Chris Butler did it on the C64. Not too bad, by the way. But uh, I thought I can't do Space Harrier on the C64. Chris Butler or Rob Hubbard, I'm a big fan of both. I, I would say, put it this way, I, I was never. Uh, I, Probably I was one of the first uh, programmers in Germany, and my, my, my the, old, the big thing is that um, the, I have produced the first game that has been banned, and that was the first game with real with Hülsberg music. But actually, I was never famous for my games. Probably, maybe I'm, I'm one of the persons that I have been in the industry for a very long time. So that's my achievement. <laughs> by, by the way, it's not the biggest hit or the best program, whatever. At least. For a very long time, uh, uh, so that's something I'm proud of. That I'm in the business for a very long time. 
I don't have as many fans as Chris or whatever. But but uh, uh, so uh, but they, uh, on the other way, uh, they're, 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 so I joined the, the media side or uh, in '91. Um, that, that's uh, quite a, a challenge, and, and, and probably that my achievement is more or less that uh, I, I managed to, with my brilliant colleagues together, to, to keep Computech moving from a print magazine house to a publishing house with websites and apps and videos and YouTube channels and social media and all that stuff. I think that's a, 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 the, the bigger achievement for, for me than actually making brilliant games. But still, to, 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 that you like it, have things to tweet in the white mix. <laughs> yes, it's, it was just an Easter egg. I guess you had some blocks to fill. Yeah. Uh, no, it was just an... Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, there was uh, spare space, so it didn't uh, cost extra, extra money. And at that time, yeah, we, we didn't even know that uh, at that time, uh, probably I, it was an Easter egg, and I didn't know that uh, it was. Since when do we know Easter eggs? Not I, the, I not don't know. 87, but it was just a joke, yes. Or, yes. <laughs> Is there anything we have missed so far? Uh, well, uh, I, I think we, we we had a lot of topics that I didn't uh, have in the last 25 years. So uh, <laughs> Seriously? Like, Nobody asked you before about your past? Of course, yes. But, but uh, uh, to be honest, uh, um, White Max on Dangerfic Disc, there was something uh, I t totally forgot about this. Uh, and... Uh, uh, and it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, that was it's, it's great. So, uh, of course, I've been asked about my past and about many things, but uh, it's um, um, always nice uh, because everyone has a different approach. And then, and, and then also, and then and, uh, one thing uh, that you have been talking to many, many people, more, much more popular than me and much more successful than the, that's um, it's, it's something means something to me the, because it gives me an impression how it works and it, it's, it's you know it's it's, it's it's a special mood where, where I would say yeah you understand and you, you uh, um, and it's a special feeling some many people wouldn't have just appreciate it because it's like what are they talking about it's like many people wouldn't appreciate it but I really appreciate that you uh, spent so much time investigating the past or the, the pioneers, and that's something really special. And I really appreciate it because, uh, uh, of course, it's uh, uh, I, I could, couldn't ask myself, and it makes me, um, it helps me also think back. Why did I do this at that time? And then, then also, and then to come come to one point, just to find out. No, I didn't do it for money. It was the passion, because that's always important. It's still important. It's, you know, when I go to work on Monday again, uh, it's also important. And that's and from time to time, it's very good to have something like this, like like a stop, to 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 think uh, and then and to have new ideas. And then and, and that's something with the, with your interview, with your questions makes me think a little new way and and that's something you need you know, always need to do creativity uh, you need to have new ideas and uh, that's something very important because you, if you don't think about it what you did mm. then uh, yeah it will get boring so yeah. you know you know, you know I'm only a little side note in the German history but Rolf Beer is really pioneer without him there wouldn't be a Pong, where there wouldn't be Atari, and all set up because I think Nolan Bushnell just copied. Yeah. From, so that's yeah. my, so that's really that's the, that's the, the big difference. Like mm. uh, you know, uh, real genius and uh, also, but it's uh, uh, but we have various markets and and and, and I think my my uh, my personal biggest achievement would be that I'm in the industry for a very long time, mm -hmm. that I've been game developer, and now I'm, um, I would say, more successful on the media side. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the, the, the part that I can um, talk about and, uh, and 
but I but Rolf Pierre, I met him once, uh, only shaking his hand and not saying a lot. But uh, uh, I was at the Lara a few years ago, and so uh, yeah, he's really a true hero. So yeah. and then and, uh, and also on the other side, I, I think that also people like like David Perry, for example, and, and mm. all stuff. That's yeah. great. White Max German, 1964. It's in the for. Um, by Hans Ippisch, oh, language man. German. Oh my God, that was really just oh my. Okay. This also so they they crapped it. They they took it from the Danger Freak disc. Okay, wow, unbelievable. <laughs> Here, I just sent okay. you the link. So, yes, I have the link. Here, and yeah. there is a download download link. Yes, I will download it. Oh my God, here it is. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> hey, it is good. High score from co uh, great. Oh my God! <laughs> you see, sixteen blocks. It says. Okay, there you yes. go. <laughs> great. Okay. Yeah. You see, the C sixty four community really has everything. Yes, really everything. Great. Okay. 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 So keep in touch and yes. talk to you soon. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a nice week. Okay. okay. So have yeah. a nice evening. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye.